This is part 31 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to fix this error. Input select does not support the type system.in32. This is one of the common error we'll run into when binding a select element to integer. We implemented this department select element in our previous video. At the moment, this select element is bound to department ID. This is a property within our component class and as you can see its data type is string. Actually department ID of the employee is coming from department ID property on the employee object because input select element does not support binding to an integer property directly out of the box. We had to create this separate string property convert the value that we have in this integer property to a string store that in the string property and then bind our input select element to the string property. Though this fixes the issue, it's not a very elegant fix. In this video, let's see how to fix this error properly. Now, let's change the binding on our input select element to bind to department ID property on the employee object. Save our changes and take a look at the browser. We see the department select list as before, but when we change the selection, we get an exception and if we launch the browser developer tools, we have that same error. Input select does not support the type system.in32. ASP.NET Core is open source, so we can see the complete source code on their GitHub repo and here's the URL for that. So within this repo, let's search for input select. Here is the source code file. Notice the name of the class is input select. It derives from input base and out of the box this component supports only two data types and we can see that in this method try parse value from string. So string and enum data types are supported. Integer is not supported. What we can do is create our own custom input select element and make that custom component derive from this input select element so we get all the existing functionality and then override this try parse value from string method to include an if block like this to handle integer. So let's quickly do that. For now, let's place our custom input select component in the pages folder of our Blazor web project. In our upcoming videos in this series, we'll create a separate Razor class library project and move all our general purpose custom components into that project so we can use them in multiple projects if we want to. We'll do that in our upcoming videos. For now, let's place our custom component in the pages folder. What we want to add here is a class file. Let's name our custom component custom input select. We want this class to inherit all of the existing functionality from the built-in input select component. So let's make this class derive from input select. Bring in the required namespace Microsoft ASP.NET Core component forms and include this T value generic parameter on our custom component class as well. Next, we want to override this try parse value from string method and the easiest way to do that is to type the keyword override and then press the space bar and we can see all the methods that we can override and the method that we want to override is try parse value from string. Let me bring this last parameter to the next line so we can see the complete code. Remember what we want to do here is include another if block like this to handle integers. In the interest of time, let me paste the required code and I will quickly walk you through it. If our custom input select component is bound to an integer data type, we want to try and parse the incoming value to integer. So we are using int.tryparse. If the parsing is successful, we are setting validation error message to null and return true. If it is unsuccessful, then we set the validation error message and return false. So if our custom input select element is bound to integer, then we want to execute this code. Else, we want to fall back to this base class functionality. For that, let's include an else block here. So 
if our custom input select component is not bound to integer type, the execution falls into this else block and here we are calling the base class try parse value from string method which will handle enums and strings. So all that is left to do is use this custom input select component within our form. So instead of the built-in input select component, let's use our custom input select component. Save all our changes and then take a quick look at the browser. We are on the list page. Let's click edit on one of the employees. The select element is rendered as before and when we change the selection, we don't have that exception anymore. At the moment, binding to integer type works as expected. Now let's change this binding to use this string property and see if we are able to fall back and use the base class functionality. Let's click edit on one of the employees and it works the same way as before. Now let's change this bound property data type to something else. At the moment its data type is string. For example, let's change this to grid and we obviously need to initialize this property with a new grid. For that let's use grid.newGrid. As usual, let's click edit on one of the employees and when we change the selection, we have that exception back. Let's take a look at the developer tools. Custom input select does not support the type system.grid and we know how to fix this. All we have to do is within our custom input select component, include another if block like this to handle grid. That's an exercise for you. At the moment, our custom component supports binding to integer. So I'm going to change this binding to bind to department ID property on the employee object, which is an integer. So with this, we no longer need this additional department ID property. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.